I think we'll call this little piece the Hillary Clinton and me. What do we have in common? Well, for one thing, we were both Barry Goldwater Republicans back in the 60s. But before that time, I've always been interested in politics. Even when I was third and fourth grade, I'd used to come home in the afternoon, lay on the floor, and read the paper. I thought Truman was great. He was the first president that I remember. I liked Ike because he was a war hero. He had the proper governance material. No matter what was going on in the world, it never interfered with a good game of golf. The other man I liked was Senator Robert Dixon, who was also a, came up with a great saying, uh, roughly this, probably not accurate, you know, a million here, a million there. After a while, it starts to add up to real money. Even as a child, I never took communism threat to the United States too seriously. I thought people were overblowing it. The party of Gus Hall, United States Communist Party, was such a minor fraction. You know, they had no real influence. Plus, communism as an idea is centuries old. It's been practiced, you know, community ownership, and that's all communism really is as an economic theory, community ownership. Karl Marx added a few twists to it, but, you know, nothing of any significance. Now I always appreciated the danger of Russian imperialism. You know, that was always a uh, threat. I liked JFK, but I thought that his involvement in starting involvement in Vietnam was a disaster. By this time I was in the U.S. Army and reading our British manuals, you know, stated that it was a hopeless civil war, that uh, we ended up backing a small fraction of the population of the country, which was the Catholics under President Diem. We eliminated the unifying authority Emperor Bo Dai, you know, and we violated our, some of the agreements the French made with Ho Chi Minh, who, by the way, remember, started out as our ally. The war got out of hand, and which we soon learned, you know, it's they violated Eisenhower's precept. Don't get involved in a land war in Asia. You cannot win. It is too big. Westmoreland's idea of body count, which were nonsense anyway. Hey, there's poor <laughs> Asians being born at a faster rate than we could ever kill them. Then we went to Richard Nixon, who came up with Obamacare, which strikes me funny. Remember, the whole present Obamacare medical pro program was originally a Republican program, which Mitt Romney used in Massachusetts, but it was defeated by Senator Kennedy because he wanted to go a little more socialized. And like he said, that was probably one of the great mistakes of his life. He should have accepted it then. Um, then we came into Ronald Reagan, who, to my mind, was a great speaker, had no interest in uh, the social conservatives policies but play them like a fine fiddle. His interest was in defeating the Soviet Union which he did. He spoke the game of the religious right but in reality he never delivered a bill on them. Then, then we went through Bush who I remember as governor they asked him what is the surest way to prevent socialism from ever being established in this country? He says, simple. Bankrupt the government. Get it in debt so deep that it can barely survive. He accomplished it. 
So that is uh, me and politics. Other issues? <laughs> we'll get those some other day. Thank you.